Hey guys, this is Paul of Vector 3. Welcome to Paul's Lab. Alright, uh, it's been a while since I've uh, had a videotape out there. Um, the main reason for that is uh, my camera, unfortunately, got a little too close to the Tesla hairpin circuit. Everything was deleted. I had at least three videos to upload and that's why we're standing in front of this board instead of you watching actual footage of all my experiments that I have just that I've done over the last months uh, <clears throat> this is just some notes for me up here so I lost my whole hard drive all these videotapes uh, so disappointed Plus a lot of personal videos too I had, even the last moments of my dog before I had him humanely euthanized. I'm like, wow, man. So anyhow, let's get back to a positive note. This is just a drawing right here. These are our two stout copper rods with the capacitors at the bottom. Okay. Uh, voltage and current. I've, I've checked voltage and currents all over this thing and had been unable to detect any except there for in a previous video where I've showed lighting a bulb across the room and you can see an analog uh, microampers going up as the filament starts glowing and as it's as it's fully incandescent and it's, it's fully charged then the meter went right back down to zero so that's an interesting point. I, I'm never going to forget that. That's telling us something there. Uh, <clears throat> so I've been unable to connect, uh, detect any voltages or currents other than the microamps at one time. So it's all about the magnetism. But first, let me tell you about the goals. I've been working on this for quite a while and I'm, I'm sitting there thinking you know what what's the purpose what are we doing this for what do you want to do it's like well I want to take this energy and have it do some work other than excite uh, the filament inside of a vacuum tube. Uh, other, I want to be able to run a device other than lights and bulbs. Okay. <laughs> uh, now, that led me to, well, how do you want to do this? Now, either we could build a motor or generator or whatever that works off of this energy which means we'd have to completely redesign how a motor and generator works. I like that. But I'm also thinking the other route is transforming the energy into our everyday electron current flowing type energy. Which I don't like. It's kind of against my beliefs. I, I, I'm tired of watching everybody transform energies. And it's like, well, why don't you change circuitry as we know it, which is kind of hard to visualize. But yeah, why don't we change, you know, using the energy in its natural form would mean changing componentry and circuitry as we know it. So right now I've just say, well, I'm just going to stick to the easy route and go with transforming. The thing is, we've got this, there is magnetism, okay, and that's what I'm going to talk about next. Now I've, I've, forget about the voltage and current meters, now I'm going to magnetometers. And... Uh, I've done lots of experiments with that. 
we're trying to understand this magnetism so that we can transform it. What's going on in this circuit? Uh, right now I'm using a magnetometer that's uh, designed for checking permanent magnets. It's a DC magnetometer. But we have AC. Well, but then again, what's really going on in between those capacitor plates? Is it AC? Um, I, I, I have another magnetometer that's actually designed to detect the magnetic fields around wires in your walls, and I've tried that meter, and it cannot get anywhere near this system without the digital s display just going crazy so I can't get a reading off that meter at all so that's why I'm using my my permanent magnet type magnetometer uh, the the gaps the spark gaps make a huge difference this is my findings now the spark gaps if, if they're a little bit dirty, uh, spark becomes a little bit erratic, uh, uh, irregular, not sparking smooth and constant, that uh, the, the, the amount of Gauss or Teslas goes way down. The cleaner those electrodes are, the smoother that spark gap is, we get a lot of huge difference not a little difference a huge difference of magnetism um, now I've done some experiments now when we put a shunt across the top of these two rods and I've checked magnetism all around here where do you think the most the most magnetism most strength there is a point. Where do you think that is? It's right here. If you guessed it, it's right in the middle. That's where we get the most magnetism. Right at that center point. Now don't forget guys, these two stout rods that are uh, parallel with each other and uh, a vertical, they don't have to be that way. They can be this way in a straight line. But from what I'm finding, it's always going to be the most magnetism in the center between these two capacitors or between these two plates. Now, I've done some other experiments. I've done many experiments. <laughs> now, I've one experiment, connect a connection on there, take a wire, and I checked the magnetism off this wire. I've also taken a wire and put it in a big loop like that. Where do you think you get the most magnetism? Right in the center. Again, center points. That's where the most magnetism is. Um, so I had to do another experiment. That led me to I said, well, let's see what happens if we have one wire that breaks apart into three wires. My question here was, if I have just one wire, I check the magnetism off one wire. This one only has one wire going off, but it breaks into three. My question was, and this was very important to my uh, proceedings as to what, how I'm going to design things, what do you think the answer is? is do you think you're going to get the same amount of magnetism off each one of these three as you would just one? You would think magnetism would fill all three, but unfortunately not. 
Unfortunately not. If I check one wire to magnetism off one wire, for example, if I got 90 gauss, this wire, say I get 90 gauss here, or Teslas, or actually it'd be 900 Teslas, gauss, whatever you want to call it, 90 gauss, just hypothetically. Over here, I would get 30, 30, 30. So that's very interesting to know. I've never seen anybody else do that, do this experiment. It's interesting to know the magnetism gets divided between each wire. Great eraser here. Okay. Uh, So, this setup though, no wires, no nothing, even if I had that looped wire coming around here, the magnetism was divided between that wire and the shunt. So the most magnetism in any setup is right here, no other wires, anything. But it's interesting, no. If we divide it, if we put another wire across there, the magnetism will be divided between those two. It will not be equal. Uh, I feel like I'm missing a lot. Now these longitudinal waves are traveling 291 thousand miles per second longitudinal magneto dielectric waves are traveling at 291,000 miles per second yes you heard me correctly that's faster than C than the speed of light which is 186,000 miles this isn't my numbers this is mainstream science so <laughs> don't blame me but supposedly these waves are moving faster than light now if I'm gonna transform this energy somehow it's gonna be through the magnetism and we have I feel like the answer is right in front of my face if we have a pulsing magnetic field First of all, it makes me think of a Tesla coil, right? You got your pancake coil expanding, collapsing field induces a current in a secondary coil. If we have some kind of pulsing, dynamic wave, magnetic wave in this wire, there has to be a way to transform that into a current. So that's where we're at now. Um, I'm going to be doing some experiments with coils which I've already did one and <laughs> I burnt it up but anyhow <laughs> energy went right through the windings you have to have space between the, the windings um, so that's it I'm gonna try not to drag this out too long uh, one other thing is this possible of creating over unity guys first of all I think of back in the 1800s think of a crystal radio the radio station is uh, transmitting these powerful frequencies specific frequencies people would tune in and it would cause enough energy to run their radio without batteries or anything now I'm thinking to myself whether you have one person at home powering their radio or you have a thousand people at home powering their radio isn't that over unity? Doesn't matter. It doesn't, the transmitter doesn't detect the load. Now, the other thing I'm doing is running this into the earth ground, the shunt there, and that's where you've seen in my previous videos I get energy through the ground. So that's another way. It's like, well, I've got one bulb out there lit through the ground, sending the signal through the ground, 
I would connect this wire into the earth ground. And then way over here, I have a ground, ground, and a, and a bulb. And it lights up. And what's to prevent us from sticking a million bulbs all around in the ground? It's not going to sense a load. So, is it capable of over unity? I think so. That's just my opinion. You be the judge. So anyhow, guys, that's kind of where we're at here. I probably forgot some more details, but uh, hope not. Anyhow, we'll see you again soon. Uh, let me show you real quick. This is uh, with the shunt on the top of the rods. And this is pretty cool. When I remove the shunt, check this out. It looks pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Have a good day.